I have here a letter that I've written and I need to send it out to a lot of people. Maybe a couple hundred, maybe a couple of thousand. I want to include their name and address and a greeting line up here, but I don't want to type those all out individually. So what I'm going to do is use a mail merge. I have a list of all of my recipients and I'm going to use that to make my job a lot easier. All right, we're going to go up here to our mailings tab on our ribbon and go right over here to the start mail merge button. I'm going to click there and you'll see I have step by step mail merge wizard. That's what I want. And when I select that, it opens up over here on the right and I am at step one of six. And step one is select the document type. Letters is what's selected and that's what I'm going to do, but you'll see I can do things like envelopes, labels. Step one is done. Step two, select the starting document. Well, I've already got it here, so I'm going to use the current document, but I could start from a template or start with a new blank document too. Step two is done. Step three, select the recipients. Use an existing list, which is what we're going to do. We can select from our Outlook contacts or we can type a new list. Well, like I said, I already have a list. It's an Excel file. I'm going to click here to browse. And it's always going to open up here to all data sources because it's looking for a database, a SQL Server connection, some kind of database. You can use an Excel file. That's what we're going to do. You can use a Word file as long as it has that information you need. But we're going to go ahead, like I said, very basic, use an Excel file choose that. It'll show me my Excel file. This is the one I want. I have two worksheets in here. I'm going to choose the MGR stockholders. Select OK. There we go. And we'll see that I have that list. Here's the list of all of the people that I want to send my letter to. I think there's about 175 if I remember. And you'll see I have all the information I need. First name, last name, address, city, state zip code gender middle initial very important we'll talk about that email address phone number birthday etc obviously i don't need all of that but that's okay we're going to choose okay step three is done step four write your letter like it says if you haven't already go ahead and write it we've got it done but what it wants us to do is now include our address block so i'm going to click on that and I get this window and it gives me options for how I want to go ahead and list that name this is a preview this is an actual name off of our list this is just a word example now if I choose just to have the first name that's what I'm gonna get first last name and suffix I don't have that I don't have it because it well David Klein may not be a junior but if you remember when we saw our list I didn't have a column that had junior on it did I but if I go here Joshua Q Randall look at that it's giving me that middle initial because we had that column remember I pointed that out I can go ahead and I can go down if I had the prefix mister or missus it would give me that but I didn't have that information I didn't have that column the Randall family I can do that that's pretty straightforward if I wanted to do mister and missus again I don't have that if I had, if it were a couple and I had their first names, it could give it to me like this. But again, I don't have that information. Whatever information I want to show up in here has to be on that list. So we're going to go ahead and just choose a basic one like that. And format address according to destination, country, and region. This is good if you're sending things overseas because it'll format the address the way they need it for there. They have country codes and stuff like that. But again, that information needs to be in your original list. I can look at a preview. And these are actual people on my list. Looks good. Let's select OK. And we see my address block, not the address itself yet, but that's OK. Don't worry about that. I'm going to give it another space. Now I'm going to include the greeting line. And you'll see here I have the option of starting with dear or two or none, but I'm going to choose dear. I can be very formal, these same kind of options I had with the address, but I'm going to be informal and I'm going to, dear Joshua, 
If I didn't have a first name, it would say dear, sir, or madam. I can even change my comma to a semicolon, a colon, or none, or I can type in whatever I want. But it's fine with the comma, dear Raymond. If I go back, Illa, Brian, Mary, etc. That looks good. Choose OK. Step four is done. Let's go to step five. Preview our letters. And there we are. Now we see what it looks like. And I'm on recipient five. I can go back and see four, three, two, one. I can go all the way through and look at every single person on that list. But it looks good. It's exactly what I wanted. So we're going to go to step five, complete the merge. Excuse me, step six. This was step five. I went ahead and if I go to step six now and click print, which I'm not going to do, uh, because if I do, the fellows in the office are going to be, and actually it's really funny because uh, we just ran out of paper. We had to go across the street and get some more. So <laughs> they don't want me printing out 175 letters that we don't need. But that's how you do a mail merge. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.